Hi guys, welcome back to Third Stall Garage. My name is Doug, and this channel is about the restoration of a 1966 Mustang convertible named Vin. Today's episode is part four in the series of restoration. Uh, if you are, haven't watched the first three, I encourage you to watch those and catch up. Today we're gonna be talking about the fender aprons, the firewall, the cowl side panels, and why I chose to remove them. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Click the notification bell, and thanks for being part of the Third Style Garage. So why would I take a car that has the four fender aprons on, the firewall in, the cowl side panels on, and actually deconstruct it and go further down. Uh, today I want to tell you why, what I learned along the way. Uh, it's a little bit scary to dive this deep into a car. It was for me. I'm sure if you're doing the same that it will be for you. But it's all part of my efforts to get this car to kind of excavate down to bedrock is the analogy I keep, the metaphor I keep using, to I get to the spot where the car is solid and I don't have any shoddy repairs anymore. And once I hit that point, I'm going to start building it back up. My goal, again, is just being a regular Joe Schmo DIY type guy is to do the best that I can to get this car as close to brand new or as close to perfect as I can with my skills, my tools, my knowledge. This is the first complete restoration like this I've done. I want to share with you what I've learned along the way. Hopefully those of you that have knowledge in this will share with me as well through the comments or send me a message. Um, but I also want you to gain the confidence that if you haven't done this before, you can too. Now I'm diving deep enough to the point where I've got the firewall out and in, in an episode or two from now, I'm going to talk about how I went about straightening the frame because it needed some serious work there as well. So if you're thinking about a project like this, I encourage you to do it. Don't think about doing it without it knowing it's going to be a bunch of work and it's going to take a bunch of time. Know that there's a great community out there who can help you answer questions, give you guidance along the way. Let's take a look at why I took these fender aprons out. You can see as the car sits right now, all four of the fender aprons are out. Now the fender aprons is the sheet metal that goes between the uh, radiator frame and the shock tower. So there's a front left apron frame here, there's a rear left apron frame, and then there would be one on each side. As I was disassembling this, I took a bunch of stills and I may insert some of them into the video as well. Uh, again, I want to get the car as good as I can to being right and being whole. And um, some of it might have been usable the way that it was, uh, but it wasn't great. The apron pieces that I took out are sitting up here on the windshield. Um, and you can see some of the mangling that happened here as I took the spot welds out. You can also see that one of the previous owners had done a small patch panel. Didn't necessarily do a great job. It was all lathered in Bondo. Some of the welds weren't even holding. Um, and in general, while they weren't awful, I probably could have cut them apart. Um, fabricated some new flanges um, to, to weld on here to replace some, replace some of the parts that had rusted out. Uh, they're about 50 bucks shipped from a place like Kentucky Mustang or NPD. And I just felt like I didn't want to cut corners right from the bat, right from the start and, and start batching things together. Um, so I decided to remove all four of the apron fenders, fender aprons. Removing the fender aprons is quite easy. There's some spot welds along the front of the radiator frame. There's some spot welds that go along the lower part of the frame and spot welds that go around the shock tower. Now, when I say it's fairly easy, it's what I really mean is it's fairly simple. It just does take a lot of work. So if you go back and watch the last episode or uh, two episodes ago on uh, removing spot welds on the cowl, uh, you'll learn some of the different ways that I, I learned to remove spot welds and what I found that worked well. You really just need to remove the spot welds all the way around the fender aprons, all the way back to the firewall, and then and grind them up nice and smooth. Try to 
not touch as much of the original material as you can and then clean it up and then when the new ones come in i should be able to to put them in and weld them in place there'll be probably all kinds of fitment issues and adjusting and tweaking and measuring that needs to be done but the actual removal of the fender aprons aprons is not really that difficult so here's one of the disadvantages and one of the debates or challenges in removing your uh, fender aprons the top of your fender apron is your VIN number and it's stamped in uh, on each side, the driver and the passenger side. Um, here's my other VIN number as well. They match from side to side. These also, these two pieces I believe are original and I think those are the date stampings. Um, this one has one down here by my hand. Uh, of when these parts were stamped at the factory. I haven't looked into those numbers yet, um, but I believe that's what they are. That leaves me to believe that two of these apron panels, or fender aprons were original. Two of mine do not have any stampings in them. In fact, the battery tray, which would be the passenger front right fender apron, had been replaced. It was actually in halfway decent shape, although it was a pretty poor reproduction piece. So I figured if I'm Trying to do it right, I figure I should replace all four of them. As I've done reading on what to do with this VIN number, um, and I'm open to curious, or I'm open to hearing what you have to say about what you would recommend. My plan is that once I have the new fender aprons here, I will cut this out. I already have tons of pictures of it, that this is the fender apron I removed, this is the VIN number, I will cut this out, then I will cut a similar square in the replacement fender apron, and I will weld this in and then blend it to try to make it look as original as possible. I'm also gonna flip it over then and try to do the same thing on the back side. Will anybody ever see that? I don't know, maybe someday somebody will when this car is 150 years old and it's a really cool collector piece. Um, my understanding is that's legal. That's the proper way to do it if you document it and aren't deceitful about it. My other option would be just to keep this, sell it with a car if I ever sell the car someday, which I don't plan on doing. Um, that would be another way to go about it. For those of you that have gone through this before, I'd be curious to hear uh, what, how you handled that, what you did, and how you felt about it afterwards. Let's talk a little bit about the firewall. This is what's left of my firewall. Let's talk a little bit about why I decided to remove the firewall. I never thought I was gonna dive this deep on this car and I think if I had known that I was gonna have to go all the way down to the firewall when I was looking at the car, I might not have bought it, which tells me two things. One is I need to get better at inspecting cars before I buy them. There were a few surprises like this that I probably should have seen, but I'm a little bit too green at inspecting cars. I will know so much more the next time I try to buy a Mustang. Um, the second reason is that I think I would have been too scared to go this far before I bought the car. But now having gone through the steps and taking it bit by bit and asking for advice and help, it's not nearly as scary as I imagined. My top flange here, which is where my cowl attached, um, as you can see is not really in good shape. Um, in fact, the majority of it here is missing. Um, that was the first reason I decided to get rid of it. The other reason is that this part here was quite hidden behind the steering column, below the cowl, um, and uh, it, in covered in a lot of Bondo. I never realized until after I got the car home that this piece is kind of patched on and goobered on with some welds and Bondo. And here's an example of some of the immaculate welding. I don't know if you can see that, sorry. Um, right here, uh, that's just kind of the quality of the work that had been done. And in my efforts to try to do the car as best I can, that's not what I want on the car. So, chunk by chunk, the firewall started coming out. Unfortunately, I don't have any video footage of me removing the fender aprons, the firewall, 
or the cowl side panels. Um, I have some still pictures that I'll use. I did all of that before I decided to start the YouTube channel. So I apologize. I don't have any fun, exciting things for you to watch and me working on it. That will start real soon. Um, but I just want to walk through why I went to the extent that I did um, with this car. The steps you go through for removing the cowl, removing the, the fender aprons, it's just cut metal, grind and spot welds, and uh, you just gotta be careful where you're doing it, be methodical, think about how it was put together, where the joints are, and how it's gonna go back together. Um, previously, I'm thankful somebody had replaced my torque boxes and my rocker panels, so I knew that those were solid, they weren't rusty, so I knew a bit of my bedrock was gonna be there as long as they were put together well, and it seems fortunately like they were. My joints up here where the firewall comes down and then joins the torque box, where the firewall joined these apron panels, fender aprons, those joints were horrible. And I can show you some of the pictures of it, lathered in Bondo, and um, I'm just, I'm glad they're gone. I ended up cutting the floor panel, as you can see the floor pan. Now typically the floor pan would sit on top of the firewall. Now my firewall is not gonna be able to slip underneath that because the floor pan is already touched to the, the frame members and to the torque box. Uh, what I've seen in other people's videos is that I will have to, to cut and tweak and bend it to fit and slide it down on top of the hump, the transmission hump, and possibly cut some relief cuts in it, get it to fit well, and then weld it in. The last thing I removed was the cowl side panels, and that's the piece right here. There's actually a little bit of it left right here. If you look on the other side, it's the piece that would go, well, this is hard pointing backwards. Um, it's the piece that would attach right here and go this way um, forward to the firewall and up to the cowl. Um, those were the last pieces of sheet metal that I found that uh, were either not in good shape or the, the previous work on them had been pretty atrocious. And I got a couple of pictures of those too. Those were actually a real challenge to get out. Um, the welds right in this area, right in that area, were just hard to get tools to, hard to get where it gets up among the dash. Um, and, and I had some funky butt welds and seam welds where they just kind of put a lot of, of metal down that really didn't do much good. Um, so now I am excited to be at the point where I think the majority of the remaining sheet metal, at least the sheet metal that I know of on the car is solid. Um, and I feel like I've got a good foundation to, to work for work forward from here on. Once I had the cowl side panels out and the firewall out, I really had pretty much access to everything. The last two jobs, three jobs that I had in front of me in terms of major repairs, were the A pillar on the driver's side right here, were the shock tower, uh, my passenger side one's in good shape, my driver's side one needed some repair, and then also the straightening of the frame. And uh, I will show you more about those in upcoming episodes and how I tackled them. Thank you very much, have a great day. Here's the slideshow that shows the removal of each of the front panels the firewall and the cowl panels. Uh, enjoy the pictures and I apologize for my humor. Thanks for watching.